What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Felipe that is approaching the Lesser Antilles. Tropical storm watches have been issued for parts of the Leeward Islands. We have Reina rapidly weakening as time continues to go on. And it does appear that Felipe is going to be the dominant storm for the next several days. We also have the gyre that we need to pay attention to in the Caribbean Sea. We continue to see more and more mile runs, kind of depicting a potential scenario of that happening. We'll have to keep an eye on that. We'll keep, uh, keep you updated on all the threats that are coming in the tropical Atlantic as we get into the 1st of October. Now we're going to go ahead and get to the NHC and go ahead and talk quickly about hurricane, well, not hurricane, but tropical storm Philippe. It is expected to become a hurricane, but that's, uh, but it's right now it's a 50 mile per hour tropical storm moving west northwest at seven miles per hour. Minimum central pressure is 1,002 millibars, and its current location is 16.2 degrees north. Uh, 58.8 degrees west or 170 miles east of Guadalupe and 220 miles east southeast of Barbuda. So we'll have to keep an eye on it at this, th at this time. A tropical storm watch is now in effect for Antigua and Barbuda at this current time. Interest elsewhere in the northern Leeward Island should monitor the progress of the system. Additional tropical watches or warnings may be required later today. So that's what we have going on. Tropical storm force winds extend outward 170 miles from the center. And if we go ahead and show you the graphics that we have pulled up right here, it's mainly once again still on the eastern side of Felipe at this current point, primarily due to all the wind shear that's been impacting. It's been a Big trooper, so uh, pretty much through this whole th uh, thing, it's been fluctuating in intensity. It's been going from 50 to 45 to 40, then back to 50. It's been pretty crazy with how this thing has really evolved. So that's a pretty interesting situation. It's expected to come very, very close to Antigua and Barbuda as a tropical storm. Where if we go ahead and show you the discussion, it's expected to get uh, get there as a 60 mile per hour tropical storm before starting to strengthen at a much more robust pace as time continues to go on and as the sheer weekend. So here's what we have. If Felipe is not a well-organized cyclone at this time, with any associated deep convection southeast of the center due to the uh, wind shear, satellite intensity estimates continue to hold 45 knots or 50 miles per hour. The storm appears to be moving westward this morning. Judging from the fixes of the visible imagery, mid-level ridging is forecast to build east of the tropical cyclone soon, which probably will steer Felipe towards the west-northwest or northwest later today, and eventually northward as it moves into the subtropics. The eventual uh, the so short-term forecast is extremely challenging due to the due to the changing depth of the associated convection, the cyclone vortex strength, and relative related steering flow. Regardless, it is clear that the risk of the to the northern leeward islands has increased, and a, the new forecast is adjusted from the previous one, which has necessitated the tropical storm watches. Further westward shifts and other watches or warnings are possible later today since Felipe has not been a well-behaved system in such a complex steering flow. Strong shear could uh, continue near Felipe for the next day or so, leading to little overall change in strength during the next time. Gradual lessening of the shear is anticipated by Tuesday, but model guidance is in poor agreement on what uh, on whether the shear will be low enough for significant strengthening. That's pretty much what we have. Here's our key messages right here. One, tropical storm conditions are possible across portions of the northern Leeward Islands Monday and Monday night, while Felipe passes near and or just northeastward of the area and a tropical storm watch has been issued for Antigua and Barbuda once again. Interests elsewhere in the northern Leeward Islands should continue to monitor this system as additional watches or warnings could be required later today or tonight. So that's the situation we have going on. Felipe is now a threat to uh, to the Leeward Islands at this current time, mainly do, uh, mainly potentially wind and uh, the rain threat, although the convection is a lot of it's on the eastern side of it. So we'll have to see if the shear starts to weaken a much uh, starts to weaken unexpectedly. We, Felipe will probably take advantage of that and have a lot better of a chance of organizing and developing uh, before it gets there. So we'll have to keep an eye on it. Felipe has been really defying uh, convention at this point. It's been around for eight plus days at this point. So we'll have to continue to keep an eye on it as time continues to go on. But one thing that we don't really need to keep an eye on anymore is Tropical Storm Rena. It is weakening at a very uh, rapid pace at this current time. Looks like the Fujiwara effect is going to be coming to an end 
in a little bit in a little bit quicker than anticipated actually tropical storm force winds extend outward 60 miles from the center winds are at 40 miles per hour weakening is forecast in the next day or so expected to become a remnant low and dissipate on monday it is moving to the northeast near 15 miles per hour so it's really hauling ass to uh, basically uh, uh, move and do, uh, do what it needs to do a turn to the north is expected tonight and monday here's what, uh, then here's the pressure 1005 millibars yeah this thing is very poorly organized at this current point i expect this thing to really to de- uh, really develop and uh, well not develop but really just start weakening and just not uh, do what it needs to do it's expected to become a remnant low and dissipate in the next 36 hours so yeah arena's pretty much its time is coming to an end but felipe is something we need to absolutely continue to monitor and as the, we get into this active weather period ladies and gentlemen be sure to check out my friends over at prestige weather consulting they do individual one-on-one consulting for cater for your local area for more information be sure to check out the link in the description description to their website using code predictor for 50% off your first month. So be sure to check the, uh, them out. They've been helping me make these videos. So a shout out to them. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get to the European models and all well, the other operational models to kind of give a better understanding of what Felipe as well as the potential gyre may do. So here's what we have with Felipe starting to organize and just kind of uh, kind of just kind of stagnate for the current time. European has been really instrumental in causing the NHC track to shift further to the west. It is expected to bring impacts across much of the Leeward Islands, including potential Essentially Guadalupe, Antigua, and Barbuda, obviously, maybe as far west as the Virgin Islands if things get interesting enough, before starting to strengthen as it gets out to sea at this current point, although the European isn't really f- uh, forecasting that. It's expecting actually a bit of a weakening trend, primarily due to the wind shear that's going around, just a rather stagnant system as it starts to emerge into another low pressure system over here so we'll have to keep an eye on it as time continues to go on i'm also paying attention to the caribbean because even the climate prediction center is predicting some sort of potential chance of tropical development in the caribbean sea so we'll have to continue to keep an eye on it as time continues to go on that's the european that's the next one we're showing you is the gfs gfs has been pretty interesting expected to bring impacts towards the northern leeward islands before starting its a strengthening trend as it moves out to see and starts encountering less and less wind shear and it gets up down to a category uh, down to a 970s millibar system and up to a category 2 hurricane before this high pressure system kind of just blocks its pattern for a short time before it kind of just interacts with this mid-latitude cyclone that's over Canada at that point and then just kind of stays out to sea after that. So we'll have to continue to keep an eye on the GFS as time continues to go on. Next model we're going to show you is the CMC model. CMC has been pretty interesting through this whole thing. CMC is kind of with the GFS when it comes to the track, moving it further to the north of the Leeward Islands, but still bringing plenty of impacts to those areas right there before starting to strengthen to a mid-range Category 1 hurricane, and then just being pushed further and further out to the east at that current point. Meanwhile, the jo- uh, meanwhile things are getting a bit more complicated with the gyre because we're not sure if it's going to really develop in the Atlantic or the Pacific side of the ocean, so we'll have to keep an eye on it as time continues to go on. However, I'm still not ruling out a potential Atlantic de- uh, development in the Caribbean Sea side of things, primarily because the, uh, the Climate Prediction Center is still showing that chance over there. So we'll have to continue to keep a very, very close eye on it as time continues to go on. So that is the CMC model as of right now. Next thing we're showing you is the nav gem. Here's the nav gem uh, situation going on right now. The nav gem is pretty interesting to say at the very least. It's kind of moving a bit e- further to the east than a lot of the models and the NHC is saying, kind of having it stay out to sea and while at the same time strengthening down to a category two hurricane while just pushing further and further to the east and it appears that it's going to be heading back to Africa. However, I'm going to be completely honest when I say this. I don't. Th- I've never seen a hurricane like that be pushed towards Morocco uh, Morocco like that, primarily because just the steering currents aren't there. But if this high-pressure system does persist, we'll have to continue to keep an eye on it as time continues to go on. So that's the NavGem model. The last model we're going to go ahead and talk about is the Icon model, which has been a very interesting run the whole this whole time at this current point. The Icon model has been kind of moving closer and closer to the Antilles while bringing impacts, potentially some heavy rain towards much of the Leeward Islands, including Antigua, Barbu- uh, Barbuda, and the surrounding islands over there, before moving out to sea as more of a tropical storm 
It's interesting that it's, that the, the that the the icon is having this kind of stagnate and then just start strengthening once it enters the subtropics. So we'll have to keep an eye on it as time continues to go on. They're also the icons interestingly also picking something else up because they're also picking up a potential tropical wave on the ITCZ that's going to head towards the main uh, going to head towards the Caribbean Sea from the main development region and as it gets uh, passes these islands right here in the Whitburn Islands it starts to develop a, pr a low pressure system roughly about s a 5 to 6 days out which is pretty interesting to say at the very least so if the icon verifies and that holds things could get very interesting very soon and we and hurricane season could definitely still not be uh, uh, be not even close to finishing if that was to happen. So that's the situation we have going on with all the models we have pulled up right here. Now we're showing you conditions. Patrick, what are the conditions to this? You don't like uh, you're saying all these these terms and all these numbers, but what are the conditions to actually support all this? Well, here's the conditions. First off, insane global sea temperatures of 30 plus degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit for those of you who live in the United States and Puerto Rico. Just all over the place, from the Gulf of Mexico all the way to the main development region. These waters have continued to be historically warm for tropical development. That's part of the reason we have an above-average hurricane season already at this current time with 17 storms. So, yeah, this is going to be... So, yeah, that's the global sea temperatures. And if anything does develop in the Caribbean, and if the wind shear is weak enough for it to really support that... Yeah, these warm waters are really going to support anything that goes in there. And what's also going to support, not only support it, but strengthen uh, that potential low is the ocean heat content. Ocean heat content, or OHC, is basically how much energy a certain part of the ocean has. It's measured by water, by global sea temperatures, sur surface sea temperatures, excuse me, and how deep they are. So just for context, the redder these are, the deeper these very warm waters are, and the higher the ocean heat content values are. In this part of the Caribbean, a lot of OHC values are over 200. For context, 100 OHC is enough to really cause rapid intensification. We all saw what happened with Hurricane Lee when it went from an 80 mile per hour Cat 1 to a 165 mile per hour Cat 5 in just a matter of 24 hours. That was in an area of like 100 to 125 OHC. 200 OHC, that is absolutely monstrous, and especially at such large a, a large scale. So we'll, the, we'll have to continue to pay attention to all of this as time continues to go on. Where Felipe is right now, it's in an area of run, around 125 to 150 OHC as it's approaching the Leeward Islands and bringing some impacts. But what's stopping it from strengthening for now is the wind shear. The wind shear has been very persistent, around 20 to 25 knots of wind shear at this current point. So definitely something to keep an eye on as time continues to go on. Felipe has been really just an unruly system. It's been very, it's been defying all convention for the last eight days or so. Rena's over here in wind shear uh, land right here. It's going to get torn apart in the next 24 hours. In fact, a lot of the Atlantic Ocean is becoming unfavorable for development at this current point. But the Caribbean, there are some pockets of of low wind shear still left, and this shear val these shear values are going to fluctuate through October. But we are going to start seeing a general increase towards the second half on average. So that's something we'll have to continue to keep an eye on especially with later threats down the road but with that being said we're going to go ahead and close the video out right here i hope you enjoyed it be sure to leave a like subscribe to the channel if you are new it helps us out helps us make more videos like these the goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather but with that being said have a wonderful day guys stay safe